Hi, I'm Pratim Das. I run the Data and AI Solutions Architecture team at Microsoft for our global and strategic customers. Hi, I'm Greg Loxton. I'm a cloud solution architect focused on data and AI for Microsoft. And today we are going to discuss about whether we need a data warehouse any longer now that we have data lakes. Well, yeah, yes, Pratim, there, there are a lot of benefits of a data lake. If you look at it, then suddenly people can store all of the data all of the time. They no longer have to worry about scale. Um, it gives you the ability to ingest the data very quickly. So you, with Scheme 1 Read, you no longer have ETL bottlenecks. Um, it gives you a very open and flexible environment. So now you, it, it can enable a level of analytics that traditionally wasn't possible in the old style of data warehousing. Um, but the, yeah, the core point really is, is that it's a, a cheap way of, of, a, of an enterprise being able to store all of their data no longer having to choose whether they store at the granular level or having to aggregate, no longer having to archive data that, as it goes over time. But what you're finding is that a lot of this is, is, is down to um, the old myths of a data warehouse as well. Um, so traditionally data warehouses are thought to be oh, it was slow, they're thought to be inflexible and they're thought to be too, it, 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 people, people have the perception it takes too long to do anything. And a lot of this is down really to process as much as technology. So typically, data warehouses are managed by IT, who are driven by SLAs, not new business requirements. And you can see this in the, in the last sort of four or five years. There's been Hadoop and Spark systems that have been built, and they've been seen to be a, a data warehouse replacement because they're much more flexible. The only problem is, is that when you come back to the same process, you start to productionize it, it goes back to IT and you get the same problems. Um, but this is, isn't just a process problem. There are some technology issues as well behind a data warehouse. So traditionally old data warehouse appliances, they're, they're, yeah, they're fixed in terms of storage and compute, which means it's very difficult and very costly to scale. And you know, on an old on-prem system, it's, doesn't it takes a long time to wheel something into the data center. So if you need new capacity, it takes a long time. But let, let's take, take a step back and say, assume I already have a data lake. Look, I, I run some of the global strategic customers. They all have data lakes of this world. So at least for my BI reporting needs, provided I have a BI tool, such as Power BI, can I not just point my BI tool to the data lake, given now they have things like Spark, SQL, Impala, why, why can't I just simply do that for my reporting needs? Again, very popular myth, and there's a lot of SQL on data lake vendors that are out now. Um, and there tends to be three main issues with, 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 with this concept. So the first of all, first of all is, is performance. So a data lake is a, is a core storage engine. It's not designed um, to, give you the, to give the end users the fast reports and the high concurrency that they're used to. Now, we come to the other side of that, which is if you want to you know, support this types of traditional data warehouse type analysis, you have to scale the system up to meet the needs. At that point, you, don't, you no longer have predictable cost. The scale, the scale out you need to do to support that type of analysis that you would get from a traditional data warehouse where it has the advanced, um, the advanced performance capabilities and workload management suddenly gets very expensive. Um, and it comes, also comes down to capability. So a lot of these new SQL engines are not as, say, mature as a traditional data warehouse. Um, they have a lower SQL capability and therefore your, the, the complexity that, that you can do on these engines isn't, isn't as high, so it limits what the users can do. Um, one of the other things we also have to think about is sort of governance and compliance and security. So again, a lot of this is process rather than, th than technology, um, but typically you don't, because of the nature of a, data, of a data lake is you don't have the same enterprise process rigor applied to the data as it goes in, um, whereas especially compared to a, a highly governed data warehouse. Um, so if you look at, let's say, Azure SQL Data Warehouse as an example, um, that's got probably the highest number of security certifications of any product in this space in the industry. Um, but also it has capabilities such as data discovery and classification features, which means you can actually ensure that you meet your data privacy standards within the business and also you meet your regulatory requirements. So that's really the data lake. The other side of this is, is self-service BI. Um, and we now, we're now in an age where People look at self-service BI and say, we can do it all. Um, so let's take, um, as an example, Power BI. Um, extremely powerful tool. It's never been easier for users to do this. And their users are very used to doing this type of workload. They traditionally, because of the problems with the data warehouse, to meet the critical business needs, they've had to build their own departmental solutions. And today, with modern self-service BI tools, it's never been easier. So let's take Power BI Premium as an example. 
in Power BI Premium, you, can, you have the concept called data flows where you can ingest data, you can do your data manipulation, and then you can build the front ends, the, uh, the dashboards, the reports that the users need. And it's great because it, it now drives an analytic culture, which is brilliant for the business. The biggest problem with this is, uh, and, and we've got to compare this to a, a, a traditional structured IT environment driven by IT, very structured, um, very good, admittedly, at the fixed, well-known requirements, but very inflexible. So these one self-service BI tools um, can actually give the users the flexibility they need. But as I said, there's a big problem with that, and the problem is data duplication, data drift, and we're moving away from a single version of the truth. So you, you now get to an environment where users are bringing in their own data in, they're defining their own metrics, their own version of the KPIs, uh, they're manipulating the data to suit their needs, and suddenly you get this fracture within the business about who has the right number. In this case, agility becomes anarchy, and right. you don't want a case where you've lost the clarity and the confidence in the data. So what we need is, we need the best of both worlds. We need the structure, but we also need the flexibility. Right, that sounds like what you're saying is they coexist almost they mutually complement each other in a modern data warehousing architecture like modern data architectures is that fair to say it is so if we look at a, a modern data warehouse architecture and this is azure's modern data architecture we have a data lake we have a data warehouse um, and we're also having it very closely linked to a self-service tool like power bi and if we look at this this model you're you, you need to think of a concept of a uh, a logical data warehouse so in this logical data warehouse, it is, you have all of these concepts, but you still have the, the data warehouse that sits inside that. So a traditional warehouse, although you have the flexibility, the traditional warehouse is, 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 still, is still very valid. So if you think about, again, Azure, Azure SQL Data Warehouse, um, it's, got, it's got the ability to scale compute and storage independently. So you scale it up and down right. on demand as you need. So that gets away from some of the technical limitations that we used to have um, with the data warehouse. But it's also very closely integrated with data factory, the data lake storage, um, data bricks, analysis services, and Power BI, which really means you can drive new analytics within a modern data warehouse, the advanced analytics in your real, real time architecture. Um, and people will look at this and say, well, isn't this complex compared to a traditional data warehouse. So if you think in the past, you wouldn't have had a you wouldn't have had a, a complex ecosystem. You would have a single monolithic system. You would have a, a Teradata or a Teaser or an Exadata. Whereas now we've got best of breed technologies. But actually, I would say if you look at the underlying architecture within an enterprise data warehouse, it would look very similar to this. The difference is now we've got these best of breed capabilities, and we can scale these as required. So we, if we only need data bricks for a couple of hours a day. We fire it up, we scale it to the extent we need, and we fire it back down again. So you, only, you, you scale as you need, you only pay for what you want, and you only, you only use it when you need. Superb. Well, sounds like what we're saying is we have the best of solutions. So don't, don't just stick a technology on to solve a problem. Use the right set of tools for the right challenges to solve a particular business problem. The one thing we need to think about, I mean, there is a layer of complexity here, and that's what we need to think about now is a layered data architecture. So we no longer have a case where everything goes into one place. We need to think about the data. What, what's coming in? Is it tightly coupled or loosely coupled? Is it structured or unstructured? So where does it sit? Where does it logically sit, logically sit or where does it best fit in this architecture? Then what type of processing are we doing? Is it traditional structured? Does it go straight into the latest warehouse? Do we use Databricks? Um, and then finally, how is the end user going to, going to use this data? How is the best way to get it down uh, to the end architecture? So really, we need to, we need to utilize the power and flexibility of, of the Azure cloud to provide enterprise data access to, to across the organization. So effectively, give the self-service users uh, the ability to get the data they need when they need it. And really, we need to foster a, a culture of innovation and collaboration. So people need agile ways of working, using the best tool for the job. They need to effectively build their own solutions, but on a core trusted data set. And effectively, this is what the power of the Azure data ecosystem is, is that it gives you trusted data and gives the business the value it needs. Along with the security, governance, compliance, and all that stuff that comes with it, the pheno phenomenal. Sounds like Azure has got the blueprints for some of the most advanced big data analytics pipelines, which most of our customers are using globally. These are battle-tested and ready to use, and customers can get started as we speak. 
So what's stopping you? Get started now.